Hi everyone, this is Maria, you're on my YouTube channel and happy 2022, I guess. I'm back after a long vacation. I'm very happy to make a new video and I'm starting my cross-teaching week. It's actually 7th of February in 2022. I'm still a little bit sick as you can hear from my voice, but I could not help myself uh, but to film this video because I finished yesterday, I think, or the day before yesterday, I finished this needlepoint, which is called Cottage Retreat. I think it's called Rustic Retreat, actually, <laughs> or Rustic Cottage. Um, so it's a kit by Dimensions, and I finished it. Yeah. It came out really pretty. However, I have still mixed feelings about needlepoint technique and um, not sure I'm gonna attempt another one um, very soon. So let's just let me tell you a little bit about this project. I started it in September 2021, finished it in, on February 6, 2022. I was not stitching it all the time. Um, it was actually quite um, <clears throat> easy process at first and uh, it does um, it, it takes some time but it's actually faster than cross stitch um, this design the whole kit was designed by the painting by Barbara Mock I know that she's very beloved artist um, by Dimensions so Dimensions uses a lot of her paintings to actually um, turn them into the cross stitching kits um, it was stitched on the 12 count mesh canvas. It had 20 solid colors, 12 blends, six colors of backstitch, five colors of French knots. And it's uh, the finished work is 40 by 29 centimeters. And in stitches, it's 260 by 195 stitches. So as you can see, I came prepared this time. You see, I wrote everything down. <clears throat> and while I'm telling you about this work, my dog. Let me tell you, I um, enjoyed the process of stitching because it was very, very quick and because I could stitch on my hands. But when I finished the work, it actually twisted a lot. Um, you can see it even now that this angle and this angle are kind of like pulling um, diagonally. It took me a lot of effort and time to actually bring it back to that more or less rectangular shape while I was ironing in it with a lot of steam. I'm not sure why this happened. I checked the other works on Instagram. I saw that they were actually pretty good. So maybe I was just uh, applying too much force when I was um, doing my stitches. I don't know. They look okay, but maybe just uh, should have left them a little bit looser. Or this happened because I was not using any frame or hoops when I was stitching. I was doing it in my hands. So the fabric, um, <laughs> if you wanted, it felt free to shape itself however it wanted. So uh, maybe this is why. But that was the case. Also, what um, what was... Let, let me just go for my pro-con list <laughs> so I don't lose my thread. Um so pros faster yeah easier to stitch because the canvas comes printed right it it's a printed canvas you can see um, the outline or and the color and uh, you don't have to check with the chart every now and then like you just you just stitch basically also there are not too many colors like 20 solid colors and 12 blends 32 colors for such a big project not too much uh, and also it's very easy on the eyes because of the very large holes so that's also a benefit and that actually like the list of pros is finished here <laughs> the cons <clears throat> and mind it when I say cons I compare this to for example to dimensions gold kits uh, the cross stitching kit so the cons um, it's much harder to stitch the more structured architectural elements like this building for example or here why i noticed that when uh, so i was checking with a preview all the time when i was stitching 
And when I was looking at the preview and comparing it to the actual printed canvas that I had, I saw that the it actually there was a difference, right? So obviously they cannot print the canvas exactly in the same way uh, in all the kits. So there was a slight shift. Because of that shift, it became very, very hard to align kind of the uh, the building and these little, I don't even know, like a fences on the sides of the bridge. And my version, it differs slightly from what actually was in the, um, uh, in the preview. So, yeah. Um, that was not easy. And um, then next thing that I have as a con is that it's stitched on canvas, not on fabric. I don't know, I'm pretty sure a lot of people understand me here, but I really love the feeling of fabric, especially if it's linen or any kind of even weave for that matter. Um, I like seeing the unstitched area of the fabric as well as the feeling of stitching on it. I was not very fond of the canvas. It's a pretty kind of um, rough feeling fabric. Eh, not didn't care much for it. Um, then, and <clears throat> the last but not least, the result. It's beautiful, but is not as detailed and as um, sophisticated as in uh, Dimensions cross stitching kits. You can see that it's a needle, but it's almost. Uh, I love how it came out. It's uh, vintagey looking. If you can see, like it's, it looks vintage. Um, however, I prefer cross stitching kits in general. Yeah, uh, the French knots were a pain because um, they're because they're always a pain. But here they were especially a pain because uh, the holes in the fabric are bigger and they always wanted to slip away and slip underneath um, the project. Um, I'm not going to show you. Okay, maybe I will show you the back part because it looks like a carpet. Look at that. But with the, um, <clears throat> with the needlepoint kit, it will not look very tidy. So for those of you for whom it matters, keep it in mind. It will, your, the back of your work will not look very tidy. Um, so yeah, that's about this project, the major update for So while I was editing my video, uh, this video actually, um, the part of it actually disappeared. All the English little snippets, uh, all the English videos that I made for you, and I always make, make actually two versions, one in Ukraine and one in English. I never uh, tried to record my voice over, um, but this time I don't have a choice because otherwise I wouldn't upload a video at all so I, and I really wanted to share my progress with you so um, here I'm showing you how I store uh, uh, how I store my dimensions uh, threads and flaws everything left over from the kits I store in the shoe box from my daughter's shoes and in the separate ziplock bags uh, yeah I store them just in case um, in case I need to uh, stitch some project that has been long out of production or if I run out of a thread in my kit you know that happened to me too and um, yeah so I store them just in case I I guess I'm like a little bit of a cross stitching maniac and I always like to have a stash of flaws besides usually you have quite good leftovers af after you stitch uh, dimensions gold kit and when and when the, with the needle point kit, it was even more leftover floss. So that was quite fortunate. And for all of you who likes following my felt projects, this is my felt 
stocking and I started a new tradition now I have felt Mondays and every Monday I'll be st I'll be working on my stockings um, this specific one uh, so as you can see I have already the little gift and a little um, candy cane done the snowshoes the one of the legs of the snowman is already stuffed and stitched and then the other one I just um, cut it and embroidered it and I was dreading and procrastinating this process um, because of this I was dreading stitching the name on the cuff of the stocking I thought that it was so so hard and this the kit instruction suggests that you use the tracing paper to stitch it I don't have tracing paper I don't even know where to find it here in Cyprus um, I don't have speedy Amazon delivery here as well so I had to improvise I found <laughs> I found a marker uh, for the fabric um, not the best choice though because this marker actually disappears not from the water it just disappears on its own so I had to trace and retrace um, the name on the felt and stitch very very fast so that the marking <laughs> doesn't disappear um, so for all of you who will want to do the same just use the marker that um, is erased with water here is um, I'm showing the marker right now I don't know it's it's written something in Chinese is written I bought it in the store in Ukraine but I'm really happy how with how it turned out to be. Um, it looks like my handwriting and I think like for me it's just perfect, amazing result. <laughs> um, uh, kudos to me. Very humble, but um, I'm very happy that this part, that the hardest part is over for me. And um, what I did afterwards, I just uh, stitched uh, the those little kind of zigzag, recrack lines um, on the cuff. And um, yeah, so this was this was quite a challenging process, I think, e even though the whole stocking takes a lot of time to do. But this part, it was, <laughs> it, it was the one that I was the most afraid of. And here is the result of my Felt Monday. As you can see, I um, did some sequin work on the leg. I did the straps on the feet of the snowman. I stuffed and stitched the leg to the felt and they look very very cute <laughs> the little straps and the little legs and yeah so th I, th I think that's a quite a good progress for one night and let's hope that it will start moving even better forward um, also what I did I did some work on the cuff on the stocking as I mentioned before so I did apply the sequins and there were also the back stitch well it's actually called straight stitch red lines and the um, little French knots um, yeah so I think it's a good progress and here is another project I'm working on on Tuesday this is my Riolis um, almond in blossom kit it looks so nice on the camera and on video whenever I film it I'm actually amazed because yeah certainly it looks nice in the real life as well but I believe that the camera really brings up all the colors and shades in it um, yeah I hope that I would finish it this year for this year almond blossoming season but I'm not sure because right now it's um, I believe like 50% done and I don't see finishing it another 50 because it took me almost like three years to finish this one uh, to, to finish this 50% it's 9th of February and the moment I decide to film a video and put my stand on the table the sun comes out <laughs> as always so as you can see I managed to stitch about 1500 crosses in two nights on this project on the 9th and on the 10th of February and I'm pretty happy with the progress actually I think that's if I do stitch a thousand stitches every week on this project I'm gonna be done with this this year yeah and even though I really enjoy it I don't think that I will ever um, take another such large project on wool yeah it's uh, not my cup of tea actually I, I do like I do enjoy the smaller projects on wool I really like them but this one is very dear to my heart as I mentioned before my my best friend gave it to me as a present and I would really love actually to frame it and have it in my room because it signifies a very 
very interesting period in my life. And um, yeah, and for some reason, I, I do have like associations with this project of of Toronto. I don't know. There, there is no almond blossom. There are no uh, blossoming almond trees in Toronto, but there are actually magnolias and they're very beautiful. And I do see them here and also the blue uh, Canadian sky. I do miss Canada, um, even though I love Cyprus, but I do miss Canada as well. And a new project. Ta-da! It's Spring Fever by Blackbird Designs. Um, it's the new project I started on the 11th of February. And I actually am a little bit excited about it because this is the first time I'm trying the Blackbird Designs charts. I've been waiting for it to come from 1 to 3 stitch for a long, long time. Um, I think it took this chart about three months to get to me. I believe uh, the holidays are to blame um, and uh, obviously the situation. But I received the chart. I got all the called for floss with a little... Um, I did have to substitute a couple of colors because they were out of stock and one to three stitch. But I am very excited to start it because I've been eyeing these charts for a long time. And for some reason, I never actually came around to try and stitch one. And this one will be the first. I do love color blue. I love birds. And I think it has this vintage feel to it. This chart calls for the hand-dyed cotton floss by Wigs Dye Works. And I have never tried stitching with it before. I did some work with um, Karen Lilies, I think, when I was stitching Mirabilia, but never... Uh, classic color works and as you can see i actually couldn't help myself but to start a little piece i did want to show um to share with you the unstarted project but um yeah couldn't help myself just had to do those little stitches i'm stitching it on the 36 count edinburgh this is a color platinum um, and the design is quite small actually it's like five by five inches i never expected this to be so small so i I think I will be able to stitch another one from this series on the other side of the fabric. Yeah, so I, I, I really enjoy stitching on the small count, on the 36 count, and now I really want to try the 40th count because I feel like it looks very sophisticated and um, unique, and it does feel very vintage. So um, the cold for fabric was 36 Ren by Picture This Plus. Yeah, but I do think that platinum um, color actually is, is quite universal and everything looks good on this color of linen. And here is the floss that I got for this project. I do like all the colors and transitions within each color. I think they're very, very beautiful. And I, I really love kind of the color scheme of this. Uh, project and it's the first time as I mentioned that I'm stitching with the um, Wigs Dry Works floss and it, it it is really exciting you know I really love our hobby because there's there are so many new um, kind of things you can try always the substitutions that I made included this cocoa bean color I think called for was the Wigs Dry Works cocoa and I substituted it with this cocoa bean and it's not color fast. So I'll have, I will not be able to wash um, this project, which is okay because it's quite small and it will be an additional kind of uh, um, inspiration to finish it earlier rather than have it in my hoops forever. Uh, so it doesn't get um, dusty. Yeah, and the second color that I had to substitute was terrapin. Um, and I substituted it with Garrison Grey, uh, which is very similar color, and I think it was quite a successful substitution. And it's Saturday, 12th of February, and I went for a walk with my dog and climbed the hill that is just near the place where we live. And as you can see, spring is upon us. Spring is here. In Cyprus, the trees start to blossom, and it's absolutely beautiful.